few days ago, this creek was a rushing mass of floodwaters. But now it's a nice little tranquil creek, and I can go and take a look at the rocks that were stirred up by the waters. I found a number of pieces here of interest. As you can see, these rocks are just loaded with little crinoid fossils. The, uh, the crinoids tend to work their way out of the rocks and then just found separately. There's another little piece here somewhere. There's a larger piece that somebody else found and they just left sitting on the bench. Kind of a quite quite large piece actually. Um, but uh, here's one that's not interesting. You've got the crinoid embedded into this rock here. And you can't see it really well, but these are pretty loaded with crinoids. Oh yeah, this one's great. You can see numerous, I mean, it's just one mass of crinoid material. Um, there's one right there that's pretty noticeable. Um, yeah, it's a very large percentage of this rock. It, it varies, this is largely crinoid. This one, you can see a little round crinoid piece here, but there's, there's a lot of pieces in here, but this one, doesn't have as nearly as much crinoid material. There's some material there. Looks like some material there. Um, as some of the other pieces. But this all comes from a layer that's eh, that thick. Let's pause this for the train. What's particularly remarkable about this crinoid layer, and by the way, crinoids are an underwater, uh, I think technically they're an animal, but they look like a plant. Um, I think they also go by the name of sea lily, and they, they do exist today. They're, they're not extinct. Um, what's fascinating about these, this layer of rock is the, the quality, which is actually typical of fossils, is pristine. And you have this, this mass of crinoid material all jammed together in broken but pristine quality. In school, you may have heard the sort of idea that over, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of years, layers slowly built up over time and you know, hardened and turned to rock, etc. Well, if this was a layer at the bottom of the ocean, over just a few years, even months, marine organisms would burrow through this and break up this material and, and digest it, etc. So, the fact that it's all pristine, broken up pristine, tells a very different story. What it says is that this material was broken, slammed into this layer, and then deeply covered up very quickly in a uh, catastrophic event. And you can back that up by looking at the layers themselves. The boundaries between the layers are, are pristine. There's no um, evidence of burrowing between them. I should say there might be some, but very little evidence of burrowing. Um, I've actually never seen any, but I understand that that does exist. So if you see clear layers between, clear boundaries between the layers, then you know that small marine creatures did not burrow back and forth because they would have blurred the boundary between the different layers of material. So when you see a stack of rocks, like you drive through the road cut of White Oak Mountain, and you see a stack of rocks that layers that are you know, oftentimes an inch, inch and a half thick, perfectly clean boundaries, one after another, after another, stacked up, then you know that they were stacked up there quickly and um, did not have time for marine creatures to disturb the layering. And this further cements that because this, this layer actually is in that stack and you see precise, you know, um, undecayed bits of crinoid material all, all jammed together that was jammed together and have been undisturbed to this day. Then, of course, as it erodes out, the erosion process breaks things down. So that's the story that we see in these crinoids.